got Channel 9 turned on or whatever it is on the mixer. Yeah. Can y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Am I coming through the speaker? Mm -hmm. Test, one, two. Am I coming through now? Mm -hmm. Well. I All right, well, I'm glad to be here. Y'all glad to be here? Yes, sir. Everybody's glad to be here. Yes, Everybody's glad to be able to get up this morning. Amen. Everybody able, glad and able to be uh, excited about being a child of God today. Yes. I want you to know that I'm happy to be here. I'm happy God gave me another Another day, I'm glad that he gave me another opportunity to come here and be with you because God is so good. He loves us. He, he takes care of us. And even in our battles and storms, he's always there. He said he'd never give up on us. Uh, today's sermon's going to be titled, uh, Who We Are in Christ. Who We Are in Christ. And, and today's uh, uh, sermon's going to be dedicated mainly to the Christian people, but the ones who are not saved, uh, and I've heard a lot of Christian people say this, you know, I'm just a, an old sinner saved by grace. Well, if you've been saved by grace, you're no longer just an old sinner saved by grace. You're a child of the living God. Amen. And I've... Uh, also heard other things that uh, didn't quite stack up to the Word of God, so I'm going to be preaching the sermon today from the standpoint of the Christian and who you are, who you are in Christ, who we all are if we made that decision to serve God. There was these kids, and this preacher was taking a walk, and he saw a bunch of kids gathered around in a big circle there. And so he came up, and he asked them, he said, uh, what's going on here? And uh, they said, oh, we've got this dog here, and uh, we're trying to decide who's going to get him, so we're telling lies. And whoever tells the biggest lie is going to be able to take the dog with them. And so the preacher told him, said, well, didn't you know that lying was a sin? And he began to preach to him, and he preached a little sermon, Ed, about 10 minutes long. And then he told him, he said, when I was a child, he said, I never told a lie. Uh, so uh, one of the little boys that was there said to the other kids, he said, well, said, we know he's winning the dog. So let's give him the dog. And so they gave the preacher the dog. It's great. It's great. Let's start off with prayer this morning. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive those if we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. I want to thank all the people on Facebook who follow us and want to show their picture one more time and uh, tell them how much we appreciate them following us on Facebook and how much we appreciate them uh, tuning in to us. Uh, it's good to have people here in the congregation, but it's good also to see uh, the people that's willing to follow us outside of these walls. And God just continues to bless us. Uh, God, if you will, give us some scripture back there, please. Sir. Chapter 5. Therefore, if any man be in Christ... He is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. 
Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The righteousness of God in him. You know, I think that preachers have been spending too much time preaching all of this sin, 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 and not really telling the people who have been born again what they are in Christ. If you're in Christ, you're a new creature. You don't have to worry about all of that. You need to renew your mind to the Word of God, and that's what preachers ought to be preaching. It's the renewing of your mind to the Christian people. Now, it's true that if you have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're in sin. You're born in sin. And if you never accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you'll die in sin. But those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior shouldn't have to hear a sin message every Sunday. They should hear who they are in Christ. I was surprised to find out that the expression in Christ, in whom, and in him occurred more than 130 times in the New Testament. This is the heart, the revelation that tells us who we are. This is the redemption power that Paul found out on the road to Damascus. Here's the secret of faith. Faith that, faith that conquers. Faith that moves mountains. Here's the secret of the Spirit guiding us into all reality. The heart is curved the enmity of God, of Jesus Christ, the Father, as they tell us and teach us of the satisfaction of Jesus Christ as he paid all for you. But he didn't pay it for you to stay in sin. Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin so that you might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We have been redeemed. Ephesians 1, 7 says, In whom we have our redemption through his blood, the remission of our trespasses according to his riches and grace. We don't have to beg anymore for forgiveness. The Bible says that uh, he will forgive us if we ask him to and put it as far as from the east is to the west. We don't have to beg for our redemption. He has given it to us and given it to us freely because he loves us. Let there be light in the firmaments of heaven and cause the, the whole heaven to leap, being in a single instant because of what Jesus did for us. He put, on, he put off his omnipresence and came down to be a man and walk among us to pay a price that we could not pay. By his grace, our redemption is the miracle of his grace. And through his blood, he paid it all. You know, without blood, there's no forgiveness of sin. The Bible is plain. But we have been delivered from our sin. Colossians 1, 13 and 14 said, Who delivered us out of the authority of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, of his love and mercy, in whom we have our redemption, the remission of our sin. What does the remission of our sin mean? Our sins are no more. We've been delivered out of the authority of Satan. You are free. It is in him that you have your redemption. 
in Jesus Christ, you have been translated into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus. You're no longer under the dominion of Satan, but you're a child of the living God. Our, our spirits have been awakened. They've been renewed. They have been co completely restored to God by Jesus. The devil can no longer put diseases on us unless we allow him to do that. So we need to know who we are in Christ so we know how to stand up against the evils of this world, the anguishes that are within our body. The high hour has come when we will know that we are no longer in poverty but in prosperity because Jesus Christ had paid the price. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I don't want. He makes me lie down in plenty, in fullness. I am satisfied with him. I am satisfied in him. I know sometimes it looks like things are coming against us, but have you taken the time to find out who you are in Christ? The Bible says, speak to the mountain. Are you speaking to the mountain? Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. I am not talking about literal mountains, although the word of God is powerful enough to move a literal mountain into the ocean or the sea. We are free. John 8, 36. If therefore the Son shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. You shall be free in reality. The word indeed really means reality. John 10, 10. I came that you might have life. Life and may have it more abundantly. Amen. What is life? Life is the nature of God himself. Amen. God's nature is life, and now we have life because Jesus Christ has paid the price. You have the Father who loves you, who loved you so much that he allowed Jesus to come, and Jesus loved you so much that he did come. Jesus said, I am the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. That's John 14, 6. He was revealing his heart to us. He was unveiling his heart, showing us who he really was and why he came and what he did to save us and give us an opportunity to be free. But instead of being free and enjoying our life and being Christians, being the children of Almighty God, we stand around and we gripe and gossip and talk about all of these things when we're supposed to be talking godly things and speaking the word of God. Mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. We can be fulfilled in this life looking to Jesus Christ. He can be all. Galatians 5, 1 says, Stand fast, therefore, and be not entangled again into the yoke of bondage. This is a grave danger for the Christian people. If they will, they can ask forgiveness and God will forgive them. But we need to be living a godly life so we don't have to spend all our time saying, God forgive me, God forgive me, God forgive me, God forgive me. We need to be trusting in God and believing in him. He had left us with the spirit 
to lead and guide us into all truth. But sometimes we go back to the sense of reasoning and we try to reason out what we're supposed to do instead of looking to God. But we are a new creation. We are a new creation in Jesus Christ. He came to give us life. Corinthians 5, 17 says, Wherefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The new creation fact gives us all we need to know that we are the children of Almighty God. Old things have passed away. That's what the Word of God says. I'm not saying it just because it's me. I found it in the Word of God. Amen. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new, and all things are of God. So we gripe and complain about what God's doing for us when we ought to be loving him and lifting him up and talking faith-filled stuff and talking to the mountain and telling the mountain to be removed. We need to talk God kind of talk and walk that walk. With God, nothing is impossible. And it's impossible for us to please God Without faith. Amen. He is the vine. And we are the branches. Right. We are connected to Jesus Christ. We have a connection. We are the branches. Look at the tree. The branches are on the tree. Yeah. <coughs> If you look at the vine and you see the branches, you see the relationship between Jesus Christ and you if you've been born again. But as long as we deal in doubt and fear, as long as we set in judgment on ourselves, as long as we refuse to realize that we're the children of God, you will never arrive to the place that God has intended for you to be. Amen. Yeah. You will never enjoy the things that God has set forth for you to enjoy. Right. You will never see the life that God planned for you. Right. You may be en route to it, but if you ain't walking in the Word, if you ain't trusting in God, if you ain't giving Him the glory for what He's done for you, you are walking in the wrong path. If, however, I said if, however, you'll walk on the word, if you'll act on it, if you'll do what God has told you to do, you will arrive at the place where God intended for you to be, prepared to do what God intended for you to do. All things have become new. Start thinking to yourself, in the living realm that I know that I may have messed up, but I'm not thinking about my messes anymore. I'm thinking about my righteousness that Jesus Christ bought and paid for for me Amen. so that I could be a child of the living God. Amen. You have been reconciled to God. You and God are okay. Quit running around thinking and talking about how miserable your life is and how you can't do anything right. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We have his workmanship. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. If you are his workmanship... You are satisfactory to him. That means that you're acceptable to him. He is pleased with you. Amen. But preachers have preached condemnation and sin so long that we do not know how to preach righteousness anymore. 
We don't know how to tell people that they're the children of God. We want to preach on sin and see if we can make them come to the altar and, and, and do whatever. I don't know. And I think that it's okay to preach that. But I think you need to preach to the saved congregation once in a while and let them know who they are in Christ. And if a sinner hears it, they might just get excited and come on up and want to be a child of God themselves. We are new. It is all new. We've been born again of the living power of Almighty God. Declared that he brought us into this life as a new man, a new individual. Our flesh is enmity against God. Our flesh is against everything that God stands for. But we're living in this body, and we're going to make mistakes. But Ephesians 4, 24 said, Put on the new man that after God had been created in righteousness and holiness and truth, will give it to you. Amen. Walk in Christ. Walk in Christ. Galatians 2, 6, and 7 said, Give us a, a graphic statement that says, As therefore ye receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in your faith, even as we're taught the abundance of thanksgiving to God who is so worthy to be blessed for what he has done in our life. We are strong in him. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Je Psalms 27 1 says, Jehovah is my light. He has made me light. Jehovah is my strength and life. Jesus said, Ask the Father what you will in my name, and he will do it. Psalms 23, 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd. We, sing, we swing sometimes free from one situation to another, not realizing how we need to call upon the Lord. But the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. We need to realize who we are. The Bible says that he sits at the right hand of the Father and he ever makes intercession for us. Amen. He is up there standing in our stead. When we do something stupid or we make a mistake or we do something that people would call sin, Jesus is up there telling the Father, he's one of mine, he, he's okay. I've got him covered. I've got him covered. I've got him covered. I've got him covered by blood. He'll never, I'll never have to go back and sacrifice myself again because I paid for the price in full is what Jesus is telling us. Glory be to God. And he's he made intercession for us. He continually does it. He presents attitude toward you. Wherefore, also he is able to save us to the uttermost and draw us near to God through him, seeing he ever lives to make intercession for them. He ever lives to make intercession for you. He ever lives to make intercession for us. He ever lives to make intercession. He is there on our behalf, glory be to God, seated at the right hand of the Father. Amen. He ever lives for me. Say it. He ever lives for me. Just as the wife lived for the man whom she loved, so in a great measure the Lord Jesus lives for you. He has only one business and that is living for you. 
he ever makes intercession for you. We are his righteousness. He bought and paid for it Amen. so that we could, he became sin so that we could be righteous. We are his righteousness. If you've been born again, then you're a righteous child of God who is in good standing with the Father. Hallelujah. Of all the wealth that is known to the human heart, there is nothing that equals this that Jesus declared through the Apostle Paul that we are Jesus' righteousness. I cannot grasp it sometime that we are his righteousness. How precious we must be to him. Amen. How precious we must be to him that he would give his life for us so that we could be part of the family of the living God. He once became our righteousness. He once declared us righteousness. And by his resurrection from the dead, now we're going forward to declare our righteousness in him. In Romans 3, 26, it says, He became our righteousness. In 1 Corinthians 1, 30, it said, He is made righteous for us. In 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it says, We have become the righteousness of God in Him. The Bible continues to tell us that we're righteous. We're not just old sinners. We are righteous because of what Jesus did, not because of ourselves. Our righteousness is a, a filthy rag. But once you're born again, you don't have your righteousness anymore. You have been made a new creature. Amen. All things are new, and all things are of God. Hallelujah. Jesus did it. Jesus. Paid it. Jesus died so that you could have life. Amen. In Galatians 2.20 it says, The life which I now live in the flesh, I live in faith. The faith which is in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. He gave himself up for you. He loves you. I am your redemption. I am his wisdom. I am. I am. That's what God said. He said, I am. That's what Jesus said. He said, I am. You know what I say? I say, I am. I am his child. I am righteous. I have his wisdom. I have the ability to give him glory for what he's done for me. A child of the living God, glory be to God. Romans 8, 33 and 34 says, It is the climax of revelation of our redemption to us. It says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? I'm a God's elect. You are God's elect. Jesus and the Father have elected you. They have saved you. They have made you part of the family of God. Who shall lay anything to your charge that the, the sons and the daughters will not receive the forgiveness of Almighty God? Who is it that can condemn you? Who is it that can stand against you who would be able to stand up the bible said that no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper no condemnation shall come against you and be able to stick 
to you because God paid that price. 1 John 4, 18 kind of grips you hard. It says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. In Christ we have received eternal life. You're in his perfect love. One God, one body. 1 Corinthians 12, 12 says, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all of the members of the body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. We are so one with him that we are called Christ. We are called Christian. The church is calling us the Christ ones. He is the vine. We are the branches. You are utterly one with him. All this time, you have been thinking about your sin, your weakness, your failures. But you need to hear what God is saying to you. You are my child. I love you. Jesus did not go to the cross in vain, but he went to buy your righteousness. There is no sin consciousness for you. There is no inferiority complex for you. You are now a Christ, and you are God's righteousness because Jesus paid it for you. Acts 3, 5, and 6 says, and he gave heed unto them, except expecting to receive something from them. That was Peter when the blind man at the gate was, or lame man at the gate was wanting something, and he took out his hand, and he asked for arms, and they gave him legs. But ask what you will. Ask what you will of God. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Amen. John 16, 23 and 24, if ye shall ask anything of the Father, he will give it you in my name. John 15, 7 said, if ye abide in me and my word Abide in you as whatsoever ye will, and it shall be done unto you. It shall be done unto you. What can we do? We can stand firm in our belief. We have a high priest who is sitting at the right hand of God who ever makes intercession for us. There's so much that God wants to do. 1 Peter 2.24 says, Who his own self bear our sin in his body upon the tree that we, having died unto sin, might live unto righteousness by whose stripes we were Healed. Amen. Philippians 4, 13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Hold fast to your confession and believe in Jesus Christ. And we have a God who is able to feel our infirmities. Hebrew 4, 15 and 16 said, For we have not a high priest who cannot be touched by the feeling of our infirmities, but that we have one who can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Yet without sin, let us therefore draw near with boldness unto the throne of grace and obtain mercy in a time of need. You will find mercy and grace to help you in your time of need. God loves you. Jesus loves you.
Jesus died for you so that you might be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Who all wants to be included? who we are in you let your spirit lead guide and teach us God who we are in you you are